Halawa. Ahab to the home team. Man, when you're feeling tribal, man, you remember, man, law is vibration. And when I, when I stare at this picture right here, man, I, I stare at these faces, and this is just a small uh, slither, a small, a small, you know, little slice of, you know what I'm saying, tribe, man. When we talk tribe, it's drop nation across the plane, you know what I mean, but... Man, just to be able to vibrate with your brothers, you know what I mean? <laughs> Look, man, there's, there's a special flow. There's a special flow when you touch those mountains, man, when you touch those trees. But you got to be spiraled up, man. And so all this is connected. All this is pertinent to this conversation. We're about to hear from the Hakan what it do. We call him the Hakan for a reason, man. I'm talking the highest breath, man. I'm talking the highest ether. Is coming through the spiral of this man's heart, right from the heart bone, and I've seen him spiral up every time, man. I'm so proud. He's such an amazing brother. We're about to hear from the brother, cause he just put it down, and it needs to be shared with the entire flock, man. A hop to the bro, A D, man. Numero uno, been holding it down, man. You know what I'm saying? A D is the truth seeker. So much drop comes. Right from the desk of AD, so he's behind the scenes, but please know he's always there, man. Always there, shoulder to shoulder, truly spiraled up, man, as a real one. And you know how I was stu what it do. Gotta give you the A hi, my brother, how I was stu, because you showed us the way, man. You know what I'm saying? When others was talking about exploring land and having to go fund me to explore the land. You said, man, let's just go, uh, let's go see what it do. That's why we call him what it do, Stu. And this is all relevant to our conversation, man, because all of this, you know, is connected to things that have happened before and things that are happening now. So when we talk about you, doll, and we break down the script, <laughs> man, we're breaking it down in real life because we've seen the script. We've seen chaos turn into order. And we've seen it turn into chaos and back into order. We've seen the wave if you've been watching, if you've been surfing the wave. And it's up to us every time to ether it up to form order out of chaos. And just like the first time around, man, this is our tribal GoFundMe. I'm bringing it back to the forefront because it's very important that we're prepared. You know what I'm saying? This was a fund put together to assist in our transition on the road or any type of emergencies situations that we need to get to the land we have a pot you know what i mean because the first time around there was no pot you know what i mean when jay stew said what it do no one rallied initially to put a pot or something together i mean the bro put together an incredible video him and his wonderful queen love to camellia who was so pertinent man and connecting to the sisters connecting to the brothers connecting to you know what i mean just the entire tribe just to Show what unity look like, man, and love to their baby girl. Uh, man, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Keep supporting the Jay Stu Baby Fund. You know what I mean? We did a we did a GoFundMe for this. We did a GoFundMe for uh, the Baby Fund. GoFundMe for Sister V's, uh, you know, to get her back on the road again. So, you know, you've, you've rocked with us wherever we ask you to support. You know what I mean? And it's always been that water flowing consistently a lot, man, from the same folks, the same... You know, flow that's supporting today, supporting back then, man. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, truly amazing because what you're putting towards our goal, you know, is allowing us to say, all right, cool. So we know that we can take those steps forward. You know, we know that if any type of situation goes down, you know, when it comes to transition, these funds will offer emergency support to our tribe seeking assistance during our trials and transition on the road, i.e. travel, food, and other essential survival requirements. So, you know, not just for the people that you see in this picture, but it could be for you, you know what I'm saying? So this is some, so that you got something in case you need it, you know what I mean, when we talk about tribing up. So, you know, we do it for, we do it for the family, man. And again, the people in this picture, man, when you look at this man right here, man, Zeke, man, this is Zeke. 
Isaac Ford, the music supervisor at, at 432 The Drive Radio, man. And just a real good friend and an incredible brother. Incredible researcher. Incredibly bright brother, man. I mean, always, uh, you know, next level, always putting it together. You know what I mean? Just from day one, he's always just, you know, allowed me to, you know, go to the furthest, you know, parts of my, you know, research or creativity because he's always there. You know what I mean? And he's always very supportive, man, from day one. So love to Zeke, man. And again, man, when you're over there tuning in on the app or on the radio and you're hearing some great slaps, Zeke has put it together for you and tuned it to 432, which is the spiral, which is the flow. And this right here. This is Hiram Jr., man. You know what I'm saying? And this brother right here is truly uh, one of the strongest men I've ever met. And I mean that, you know, in every sense of the word, man. The brother is just a strong brother mentally, a strong brother spiritually, a strong brother physically. He's an amazing brother, amazing flow, man. And, you know what I'm saying, you see where he gets it from, man. It takes a man to raise a man. And when we see it in real time, when they take these trips together, and man, I mean, let me tell you, it is a beautiful thing, and it's encouraging, inspiring me to have the same relationships with my sons, man. So, A-Hob to Hiram Jr., we love you, man. A-Hob, Isaac Ford. A-Hob, Hakan Hiram. A-Hob, A-D, the truth seeker. A-Hob, how I stew what it do, because you already know, if it ain't about J. Stu, it ain't about shit. Because J. Stu walked through the portal. And again, all this is... You know, confirm, it's validated, it's connected, and it's just to, whenever we speak out as a tribe, whenever we see something, you know, that we like, you know what, this is worth speaking out about, because we do it for our family, not for no ego, not to bash nobody, not to do none of that stuff, man. And this is just truly for clarification, you know what I mean, for order. Because again, even with this, there was no pot. All this talk was being done back, man. This thing was put together in 2016. All these videos <coughs> started being made, you know, just talking about, you know, what's in our backpacks. And we started making backpack videos. I mean, you know what I mean? Hey, man, you know, love love to, uh, you know what I'm saying, Vex Lex, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what else to call him. He showed us a lot. I know why you love him because I once feel the same. Felt the same way, and I feel the same way, man, because I, somewhere in there is that brother that I, too, love, you know what I'm saying? But whatever this direction is, and if you didn't see it, if you missed it, whatever the case is, whatever the aggression is, whatever the, uh, you know what I'm saying, whatever the glitch is that, you know, makes it impossible just to get over the hump of the simple things, get over the hump of just, you know, seeing clearly enough to not keep breaking the same commandments and making the same mistakes so when you talk about animal sacrifice which the hot is about to get into and we're just talking about a tribal flow it has everything to do with the tribal flow but the tribal flow has order and we're missing an order if we're just talking about skipping over the creator making contact with you and then picking up an animal a lamb in particular and slaughtering it so we're going to get more scriptures with the Haka. But you know what I mean? Just know that it's all tribal and it's all Ahab, it's all love. And this is all our responsibility, just like it's yours to speak out. If you see something that is against the flow of the creator, you know what I mean? Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Let let them discern. Let Hawa see, see us, you know what I mean? If you don't see us, let Hawa see us. But we hope that you see us. We hope that you that we can see, you know, clearly together down the same lane, walk down the same road, that's all right. We all making a journey, we all got a journey to do. So keep supporting the flow so we can, you know, make that journey together, you know what I mean? We got a journey to make, we heading home, we're talking about we are awakening, we are returning, we are making our exodus from the concrete prisons. Man, free the prisoners, man. This is the third wave, man. We do it for the captives, man. To once again vibrate with our creator and our sacred trees. These funds will offer emergency support to our tribe seeking assistance during our trials and transition on the road, man. Travel, food, and any other essential survival 
requirements, man. So, again, the first time around, that wasn't there. I don't know why that wasn't there for our family, man. A how to our sister Shalice and our brother Mario. A how to our sister Vanessa Perkins, VP, who literally came with shelter on her own, man. Drove her, you know what I'm saying, RV from from Louisiana, man, to Utah to be sheltered for the tribe because there was no shelter for the tribe. And Lex Will knew that they were out there, man, and he did nothing. He did nothing. He did nothing but leave them high and dry. He did nothing but sever ties. And even when they try to finally reach him, say, oh, why don't y'all just go get jobs in the cities? This was your idea, right? You want all the credit. You want all the credit for Utah, right? All your great research, man. We give you Ahab. But any research and information, especially when it comes to truth, is coming out of us. Because we are the truth. It's for us. It's our truth. You can dig on it, but it's our truth. And the truth is that this is when, all praise the creator, we knew it was time to rally around our family rally around our tribe, and walk through the portal. And it's been Drop Nation ever since. Because the drop is the healing do, and we came with the healing do, which means that the healing do is in us, and it's on us. And that's what the drop is, it's the do, it's the healing do. It's the ether, it's the water. So if you ain't flowing with the water, and come on, man, just uh, jump on in, man. The water's warm. But this is why this was created, because we saw how a chaotic situation left our brothers hanging. And this ain't even, you know, put Jay Stu out there. I'm just saying what I witnessed and what we had to go through, highs and lows, man, to make sure this experience, man, was one, safe, safety first, man. And make sure, you know what I'm saying, that we put ourselves in the best position possible for the most success, man. In every, you know, sense of the word. Connection with each other, connection with our creator, and connecting to our land. And because of the unity that came together, because this brother and these families had no ties and no connection and no help, even though it was somebody else putting this whole thing into motion. That's why we became tribal and said, you know what, this will never happen again. We're going to have a pot. We're going to be connected forever. And we're going to buy our own land. And we didn't do a GoFundMe to raise money to buy land. We didn't do a GoFundMe to raise money to explore land. We did money to raise, we did a GoFundMe to raise money so that we always had a pot of emergency support because they had no support. Lex Will did not come to their rescue. He was on the phone with them to get there. They got there. He was gone. This is not me bearing a false witness. This is what I witnessed because I'm going through it with my tribe. So that's why I can't respect a man that would leave his brother hanging. And if you never saw it or you missed it or you came later, you don't understand. You don't overstand. We've witnessed what happened last time he sent people to Utah. Or people were inspired to go to Utah. Jay Stu was inspired. It wasn't just Lex he was following or nothing like that. He's a grown man and he had a vision. And that vision turned out to be Drop Nation, man. The healing dude. That vision turned out to be land that we were able to pinpoint and later purchase our own land we ain't going out there on someone else's land when we go there we just flowing we just flowing man and yeah you're invited you're invited to build you're invited to you know be there to support a tribe that's truly just flowing again we didn't ask for nothing to buy our land these brothers put it up, we put it up, and we got our land. And now we got 10 acres of land that we can flow with as a start. And every year our goal is to buy more land because of the portal. But yo, 
if he wasn't left hanging, then this would have never happened. You know what I mean? So the creator's perfect. But he was left hanging. And when I see family headed out again, I get just a similar itch. You know, I get a similar feeling like, oh, man, I got to speak out. Because the last time I spoke out, it became tribal. The last time I spoke out, we tribed up. And by tribing up, we worked together to buy land out of our own pockets. 100% cash down. So that we didn't have to burden no one on YouTube about it. We say, can we do it? Cool, let's do it now. This is perfect. This is a start. But our goal is to have land all over the place. Not just one plot of land. We want land in Arizona. We want land in New Mexico. We want land in Utah. This is our goal. We're not just going to be one place sitting around. We're going to be building land. We want our family. We, we're encouraging our family everywhere to start buying land. Just buy land. You drop nation. Let's go. We drop nation, we're going to have land everywhere, man. Now, if that's what came out of this, that we're connected with our land again, and of course, you know, people say, why Why you got to buy the land? It's your land. Hey, even Abraham bought the land. You know what I mean? You always got to seal the land when you talk about Jer Jeremiah. You got to seal the land. So there's something, you know, you know, very, uh, you know, technical, man, and, and, and really just, you know, it's really a spiritual flow, man, when you're able to seal the land. Seal the land, man. We know we in Hijack City, but this is allowing us to seal the land. And again, we're not putting up funds so that we can buy the next piece of land. But this right here. You know, it's just our emergency fund for our tribe and those situations that could be hostile or, or you know, life-threatening or, or just, you know what I'm saying, an incredible, you know, you know, situation that they need to get out of right away. You know what I'm talking about. So, a hive to all the support and the great supporters. And this is all to be brought out as a connection to everything the hot kind is about to drop about the animal sacrifice and it's not an attack on nobody who's out in Utah right now. I truly wish y'all the best because the land is yours. You're on your land. There ain't no division, ain't no separation. I'm going directly at the head bone of someone who is hijacking the entire overstanding of what it means to sacrifice or what it means to Truly keep an oath, you know. Truly keep an oath. An oath to protect your brother. To not leave your brother high and dry. An oath to not bear false witness of anything you're not witness to. You're just breaking oaths, you know what I mean? So, I will be talking directly to Lex Will in this video. I'm going to let the Hakan do his thing. But, you know, we're going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. We're going to have a heart-to-heart. We're going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. If you still got a heart bone left, which I know you do, I need you to feel me. I need you to feel me, dog. Brother to brother. Drop Nation. Hey, man, Drop Nation is you. You're the healing dude, right? You're responsible for so much of this. We only had to pick up the pieces where we saw that they've been left and stranded. Information, especially all the information before it was deleted, 700 videos wiped. I've never seen anybody wipe 700 videos. But you did a video wiping 700 videos. And people were personally attached to those videos because they woke them up. And you made it sit there while you erased every single one of them. And I was in your classroom, bro, and I was like, damn. But I needed it as a research tool. You say, oh, well, you know, sometimes you just got to know that, you know, you should have been paying attention. And, and But you never repeated 
or built on any of that information, man. That was the gold stuff. That was the good stuff you erased, and you never made up for it, man. You never had a flow ever since then. And those that were paying attention knew that and said, well, why did he wipe his videos like that? That was all the drop. That was all the drop. You know, it's been a lot of confusion to get to this point. We need a resource, man. We need a reference. We need a connection. This is not about information. If I wanted to pop in YouTube channel, I'll just, I, I'll just drop anything, man. I'll just talk about, you know, anything. You know what I mean? All day. I'll just have a camera all day. Just here, you know, here's, here's whatever popular top topic is. All right, let's, let's, let's talk about slave ships and, and, uh, uh, the Indian, the, the Portuguese, you know what I mean? We can do this all day, man, but if it ain't tribal, if you don't have a goal, if you're not doing it for the prisoners, if you're not doing it for the captives, man, if you ain't doing it for your brothers, man, or your sisters, what are you doing it for? So I appreciate what's come out of the turmoil, of the chaos, whether you like me or not, Lex, or whether I respect you or not as a man. A man that spews hatred, a man that spews lies, and a man that bears false witness and leaves his brother stranded and hanging, whose life could have been on the line if it wasn't for, you know, the creator raising brothers up to form a wall of protection. And this is a wall of protection that will never break. This is a wall of protection that truly is a wall of protection. And the water already has you surrounded. The water has us all surrounded. Either you're going with the flow or you're going against the tide, man. And there's no moving water like that. We got land today as a tribe, as a community, because of the steps that these brave warriors, man, these souls took not to explore land, not to raise money to explore land, but to go to sell everything in their entire apartment, sold everything. Same with Mario and Shalise, same with Sister V. Went out there, man, because you was talking that talk. Because you was trying to explore land. You could have worked together to explore land with Hawa Stu and the crew. But you left them with no healing due. And because of you, there's Drop Nation. Don't get mad at us now. Don't be vexed now because we don't agree with your flow. Because there's a separation. When you leave your brothers like that, man. There's a separation. And I don't care... I ain't trying to convince nobody about what happened. These brothers know what happened, and that's it. But I'm telling the community how we got this far. So when we talk animal sacrifice and you see it gets emotional, just know there's history to this. So love to Hawa Stu, love to Camellia, love to Shalice, love to Mario, love to Sister V, love to AD, Hire, I mean, all of them came together, man. To make sure the family was okay. Jay Stu came out of his own pocket. You know what I'm saying? To make sure Mario and Shalisa's situation was better. And then Drop Nation came together, man. And man, you know what I'm saying? Rally around Jay Stu, man. Um, about phew, probably two, two and a half, close to 3,000 of this went towards different, you know what I'm saying, elements of emergency and situations already with that particular wave. So... You know, we have to keep it building. We have to keep the water flowing. So that's why I want to bring it back to the forefront. But right now, we're going to fall back and hear some great words dealing with the script. The bro picked up right where I left off, man. I really appreciate that because I only had, I think, four minutes of recording time. So I was speeding through that thing. But I'm glad that you, uh, you know what I'm saying, kept that high breath, got that high breath on it, man. So now the hot con's about to dig all the way in. And I appreciate this, brother, man. Let's keep it flowing. And a hop to everybody for supporting the tribal flow. And again, this is our emergency flow to support our tribe and trials of transitions, whether it's on the road, travel, 
food and other essential survival requirements. So you're literally making sure that we got what we need as a backup plan, as a pot, if all else fails, man. So keep on supporting the flow. The link is right beneath. How kind, what it do? We talking lambs. We're talking sacrifice. You are the lamb. You been sacrificed. How Khan told you that. What it do, Shalom. What it do, Shalom. What it do, Shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalom. Simple, simple. He break. Words that you should be fasting for every day of your life, all right? Um, wow. Uh, man, I just want to, you know, because it's, listen. What a, what an Israelite knows is very important. Um, I mean, it's a big discussion. Do we sacrifice animals? Uh, I got to bring this up, man, because there's a lot of people out there thinking that we sacrifice animals. So, man, Shabbat Shalom. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling, man? Uh, I hope everybody's feeling well, but there's a subject about sacrificing animals. I got hit over my head with it, you know. I'm chilling with the kids, you know. I get hit over my head talking about um, do we sacrifice animals uh, and are we sacrificing animals and are we sacrificing especially lambs are we serious i thought it was a joke like I, when i read it i thought it was a joke but then i didn't even respond to it and then some then they sent it over my desk again hiram do we sacrifice animals and especially are we sacrificing lambs in 2019 for what for uh for i guess burnt offering Oh uh, wow! So man, the only thing I can do is go. Only I, you know, the only thing I can do is revert back to the scriptures, back to the Torah, and that's the only thing that we can do, and that's the only thing we should do is we should revert to the scriptures. All right, so to the Torah. So that question. Um. So so I seen L. Great job, man. Great job. Uh, Psalms four five. Psalms 27 and 6 and Psalms 50 and 8. Okay, it talks about the sacrifices. And that's in Psalms. And it talks about the sacrifices of joy. Sacrifices of happiness. Sacrificing your sins is actually admitting to Hawa your sins. Admitting to Hawa, right? Even though he knows... <laughs> your sins, but he wants you to admit them, to outwardly admit them, so therefore to him, and, and, and to beg, to beg, to beg for your transgressions, okay, those are the sacrifices, sacrificing blood, that's another question, sacrificing the lamb, that's another question, remember you are the lamb, so you want to sacrifice the lamb? You know, a lamb is a baby. That's a baby. So when it comes to your question about do we sacrifice lambs, rams, goats, or any animals with the blood, I'm just going to have to revert back to the scriptures. It don't, my opinion is not even valuable, okay? We have to go back to the scriptures and back to the Torah and see if... Um, if we can just, you know, get a bird's eye view on, 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 should we or shouldn't we? So, uh, L, man, peace up, man. Uh, um, yeah, you're right. Psalms 4, Psalms 27, Psalms 8 talks about what we should be sacrificing. And, um, but I want to get over, uh, I want to finish actually where you left off. And that was on Psalms 50 and, uh, 7. All right, Psalms 50 and 7, I think it says it clearly. But then if that doesn't say it clearly, I got a couple more verses. I got a couple more chapters that might, you know, that might, uh, you know what I'm saying? That might um, 
make you think on a higher uh, a higher vibration. Okay, so let's get into Psalms 50. I'm a, matter of fact, let me pull up the sword for you. I'll pull up the sword. Okay, so we don't waste no time with it. Pull up the sword, man. Uh, but I want to just start reading. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read from the NLT. Okay, and uh, we're gonna pull up the sword and we're gonna read from that. But um, let's go to Psalms 50 and 7. Okay, this is Dawit. All right, this is Dawit. All right, this is Dawit in Psalms 50 and 7. Okay, so we're gonna go over there, and this is uh this is all about the sacrifice. All right, of lambs, as you call it, the sacrifice of lambs, goats. Okay, that's a baby. Okay, a lamb is a baby. A ram is an adult. Why y'all didn't sacrifice? Why y'all don't sacrifice? Don't worry about it. But the point is, you know, a baby, man, a baby, you know. Um. So I, we just gonna go back to the scriptures with it. Let's uh. Let's go to Psalms fifty. Hashem, Abba, Hawa, Yahushua, Hamashiach. Did y'all hear me? Ba, Hashem, Abba, Hawa, Yahushua, Hamashiach. Uh, the law's vibration, all right? Oh, man. The law's vibration. Um, the law is vibration, all right? And uh, that is that correction, okay? That is that correction in the law. The law is vibration. Okay, uh, that we let's go to Psalms 50 and 7. All right, I'm gonna read it from the NLT so we don't have no confusion. But it says, Hear, O my people, hear, hear, O my people, listen as I speak. All right, listen as I speak. I am Hawa, your God. All right, I am Hawa, your God. All right. I have no complaint about your sacrifices, okay, or the burnt offerings you constantly offer. But I do not need, okay, I do not need, I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens, okay? For all the animals of the forest are mine. All the animals of the forest are mine. This is a wall. This is our creator speaking. Okay. So it says, I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings. Okay. To have been continually before me. Okay. To be right. To be right. Correct. All right. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices that you offered to have been continually before me that you offered in the past. Okay. He said, I'm not going to say nothing bad about, you know, you know, or I'm not going to reprove. Okay, I will not reprove thee. Okay, uh, let me see. Let me try to hit it. It's backing up a little bit. Uh, there we go. So, reprove a primitive work to be right, that is correct, reciprocal to argue. Okay, all right, causatively to decide, justify. Okay. So I'm not going, I will not justify thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me, all right? I will take no bullock out of thy house, all right? I will take no bullock out of thy house, he goats out of thy foes, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle, 
upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine. If I was hungry, this is Hawaii speaking, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, all right? And the fullness thereof. I will eat the flesh of the bulls or drink the blood of the goats. Offer unto God. Oh, he said, will I? Will I eat the flesh of the of the bulls or drink the blood of the goats? <coughs> All right. He said, will I? All right. So let me read it for you in plain version. It says, oh, my people, listen as I speak. Hear my charges against you. All right. Hear my charges against you, O Israel. All right. For those who tried to, uh, you know, listen, listen to this. Hear my charges against you, O Israel. These are my charges against you. All right. I am Hawa, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer. But I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens, for the animals of the forest are mine. Allahu wah, man. Peace to the hot con, man. He's giving us that fresh air. And this is not to be debated. This is not debatable. You have to you have to get over your bloodthirst, man. You know what I mean? The most I saying, I don't need that. I have no complaints about how many bulls and and, and, and things you slaughter. Oh Israel, you're so bloody. I mean, what if Israel woke up across the plain and just started slaughtering all these animals? Called my, oh, we're so holy. Let's, we're going to sacrifice, sacrifice, man. Where's your tabernacle, man? Where's Hawaz's house on earth? Is it reestablished? Is the priesthood clearly reestablished fully? With all the particulars? With all the precise measures, has the priesthood been reestablished clearly for the entire earth to see? So why are you claiming to be some priest and shepherd with nubs? And I keep saying that because you say it, man. You, you point to a six-finger thing, and that's a Nephilim thing, not a priest thing. You know that. Stop being silly with the nubs. Cut it with the nubs. Where's the tabernacle? Because that's where you got to bring, that's where you got to bring that offering to. Israel's just not allowed to start sacrificing on their own. And now you got to bring it to the priest. Oh, I am the priest. Look at my nubs. Come on, man. It's play play. Where's your conversation with Hawaii? Where's your conversation with the creator? You say, hey, hey, where's your conversation with hey, hey? Show us the documentation. Where's the witnesses? Who's seen the miracles? This ain't no fucking game, man. You know, excuse me, Hakan, excuse me. This ain't no game, man. I've seen this before. We've seen this story before. We just brought you in on the whole J. Stu, Hawa Stu connection and how this formed a greater ether. But do you know how, do you know, do you, I don't think you understand the amount of hijack we had to get through. Just to get, you know what I mean, things, you know, beginning to connect and make sense as a unit, man. Just because of the chaos. Just because of the chaos. Oh, everybody come, everybody come, da 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 Where's all that coming from? Because it sure wasn't there with Jay Stu. So what's this all about? That's why you got to kind of, you know, pivot. You got to pivot a little bit and say, what's the intention? Just to build up a bunch of, oh, okay, you know, everybody come. We all hate Drop Nation. Da, 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 da. It just seems like a a, a very, um, you know, calculated, calculated, you know, ordeal. And some people are really there because they love their creator. But to you, it's calculated. Because no one who's not calculated is just going to you know, get some type of lamb from some farm or some 
some situation, slaughter this animal. It, I mean, you must have thought it through, man. You must be calculated. You must have thought this through. That's how crazy it sounds. That's, that's why I can't even talk about it, man. Because you've convinced people that it's all right. Without letting them know that the creator don't need your animals in your blood. I don't need no more bulls. I don't need nothing out of your barn, man. I need you to stop being a harlot, Israel. I know how bloody you can get. I know how bloody you are. You're not here because you don't slaughter enough. So how is slaughtering going to free you from what plague? You think the creator is going to plague his people? This is redemption season, man. You think the creator is going to plague us today? We've been through the plague. We've walked through the fire and our garments are still unscorched. And I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, man. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. All right? If I were hungry, I would not tell you. All right? For all the world is mine and everything in it. I do. I got to back it up, hot car. I got to back it up, man. The price is going up. On a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains. And all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, man. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. All the animals are mine. Do you have Hawa's permission to take the life of his animal? Just for your sake? Because you didn't have no conversation with our creator, man. Stop fooling yourself. The nubs don't count. Bulls or drink the blood of the goats. Offer unto God. Oh, he said, will I? Will I eat the flesh of the, of the bulls or drink the blood of the goats? All right. He said, will I? All right. So let me read it for you in plain version. It says, oh, my people, listen as I speak. Hear my charges against you, all right? Hear my charges against you, O Israel, all right? For those who try to, uh, you know, listen listen to this. Hear my charges against you, O Israel. These are my charges against you, all right? I am Hawa, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer. Any questions? Look, man, here's my charges against you. First of all, my beef is not with your sacrifices. I have no complaint all about all that stuff. My beef is something else, Israel. I ain't tripping on your bloodshed, Israel. I know how you slaughter. You're not here for lack of slaughtering. You're here for being out of order. To slaughter an innocent animal today is out of order. You're in captivity. You're freeing nobody by doing that. You're putting blood on your hands and even worse, you're putting blood on our family's hands. I wouldn't speak up. I wouldn't speak about this to, so I can just talk to you. This ain't about you, fool. I care about the people who care about the creator. I care about the flock who don't even... You know, have an understanding, understanding, or overstanding of Hawa. I care about the flock that calls the creator Yah. I care about the flock that calls the creator Heya. I care about the flock that calls the creator Hawa or Yahawa or Yahuwah. I care about Israel. I care about the copper color Mari Khan, man. I care about the priesthood. So I care when there's blood on their hands and false shepherds. But I do not need the bulls from your barns 
or the goats from your pens, for the animals of the forest are mine. I don't need it. And I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, man. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. Alright? If I were hungry, I would not tell you. Alright? For all the world is mine and everything in it. I do do I eat meat or bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God. Alright? Make thankfulness. Make thankfulness your sacrifice. Make thankfulness. So before in Psalms we got, you know, make make sacrifices of righteousness or sacrifices of joy, man. Make a sacrifice of thankfulness, man. Sacrifice your ego and be thankful. Be thankful that brothers are here and sisters are here that care, man. That don't have to all agree, but we care. Genuinely, we got other things we could be doing, other things we do do, but this is something we care about, man. And we decided to try up to grab our land, man, to own land, to build our land for the sh for the for the whole entire flock, man. You know what I'm saying? This is a shelter that we're building, whether we know you or not, whether you're building with us. Maybe you'll need it one day. Maybe you'll need coordinates one day. Maybe when the shit hits the fan. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe it would be there to, you know, save your life, save your family's life, to be a shelter, not just in one area, but multiple areas. That's why we're doing it, to build shelter for the flock. It's not some super inclusive thing, but right now, a lot of stuff got to be off the radar. A lot of stuff got to be very, you know, inclusive. You can't just blurt all your business out knowing that it's a frequency war. So when you see people doing that, oh boy. Radars up. They must have a lot of protection. And I ain't talking to creator. Because I'm telling you for real, for real. <laughs> this ain't no play play. We're talking about blood on the hands of our brothers and sisters slaughtering Hawa's animals. Make thankful your sacrifice. Make thankful your sacrifice to God. All right, to Hawa, all right, and keep your vows you made to the Most High. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will be, and you will give me glory. All right, but God says to the wicked, why bother reciting my decrees and pretend to obey my covenant? 17, for you refuse my discipline, the discipline. And treat my words like trash. When you see when you see thieves, you approve of them. You spend your time with adulterers, your mouth is filled with wickedness, and your tongue is filled of lies. You sit around and slander your brother and your own mother's son. Why open your eyes? This is all we talking about. Slander for what? Wicked for what? You got to hear the Hakan if you want to see clearly. And pretend to obey my covenant. We got folks pretending to obey the covenant of Hawa by saying, Oh, Hawa feels it's okay to slaughter this animal. Now you're bearing false witness and speaking falsely on behalf of Hawa. You do not... You do not speak falsely by Hawa's name. That blood is on your hands, man. And I just hope you see clearly. I just hope the deed ain't done. I hope it's still time for the land to go, f lamb to go free. We trying to save the lamb, man. Because <laughs> sometimes the lamb needs saving. 17. For you refuse my discipline the discipline and treat my words like trash when you see when you see thieves you approve of them you spend your time with adulterers your mouth is filled with wickedness and your tongue is filled of lies 
You sit around and slander your brother and your own mother's son. Why, while you did all this, I remained silent and you thought I didn't care. Now I rebuke you. Listen to all my charges against you. My charges against you. All right? So, that was Psalms 50 and 1. So the Most High clearly says that he don't need none of your animals because those are my animals. They're not your animals. Okay, and he said, do I eat the meat? Do I eat the meat of a bull? Do I drink the blood of a ram? All right. Let go. So therefore, all right, so now let's go over to Leviticus because this is, man, this is very important. So this is what I want to warn uh, someone who calls herself a, a, a children of Jacob or a child of, of Judah to um, to beware, first of all, to fear the Most High. Any child of, of the Creator fears the Creator, okay? And, and if he don't know what to do, then he's silent, okay? That's wrong rule of the Creator. If you don't know what, just be silent, okay? Don't move, be still, and be silent, okay? So let's check Leviticus 10 because I think that's very important when it comes to talking about, uh, you know, burning strange fires to the Creator, all right? I think that's very important, all right? Let's go to Leviticus 10. It talks about burning strange fires, right? Um, yeah, that was the son of Nadab and Abihu, okay? Um, that was the son of Aaron. Um, Aaron, two sons. They burned strange fires. Let's see what the Creator is talking about, okay? So if you're in the NLT, go over to Leviticus. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm flip flopping through this. Go over to Leviticus. I'm so happy to just storming through the book and finding the chapter instead of going through the book. Well, by now, you know, we should have a bird's eye view of where where each book is uh, listed anyway. But let's go over to Leviticus 10, okay? It's the sin, the sin of, of, of Nadab and Abihu, okay? Let's go to Leviticus 10. I'm tripping. All right, here we go. Leviticus 10. All right, this is the death, all right? The death of Nadab. In the in the Bihu, okay. Nadab and the Bihu was Moses and Aaron, first sons, first two sons, okay. They were joined into the priesthood, all right. They were anointed into the priesthood, and after that, this is what happens. So let's see what happened. So Levi, uh, Levi, Leviticus chapter ten, verse one. Alright. Let me show it over to you. So we read it from the uh read it from the um, sword first. Okay. It says, And Nadab and Abiru, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, okay, which he commanded them not. Okay, and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. And Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spoke, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh. Alright? Come nigh me and before all the people. I will be glorified and Aaron will be held his peace. Okay? And Moses called Mishael and Eliz, uh, Elzaphim, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, come here, okay? So, so we know that they were killed. Nadab and Abihu were killed for burning strange fires, okay? But let's get a clear account on what happened. Let's go to Leviticus 10 in the, um, let's read it from the NLT, all right? All right. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals on fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. All right? Different than he had commanded. So, basically, 
I don't know, man. You got. I don't know. If, you know, if cats got the dragonology, if they know how to 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 burn a fire, but uh, you know, it's this thing that that uh, the devil or Lucifer or the deceiver or whatever you want to call it, the disagreeable, have you um, have you like say when you call when we feast, right? So when we cook outside, we call it you. We call it a barbecue, but it's a feast. So, you know, they have trained us or programmed us to use coals in our fire, right? To use, we go to the store and buy coals, like we call it charcoal, right? How many of you use charcoal to, to, to light with your fires outside? How many of you use charcoal to cook outside when you're doing what you call a barbecue? Probably most of you, all right? Did you know that I would... That actually is abomination right there. Because what's in the charcoal? All right, the food that you're burning to eat. All right, and you're cooking it outside so the smoke is going up to the uh, to the atmosphere, to the heavens, okay? To the realms, you know, to the firmament, you know? And you're cooking it with what? You know, that was punishment. That was punishment that the people had. You know, that was punishment. Remember he told Elijah, for punishment, cook our food at first with human dung. And then Elijah said, man, hold up. Come on. Uh, why do I have to do that? You know, can I just, uh, you know, I, I, I've i never broke a commandment. Okay. I've always worshipped you, Father. So um, why do I have to, you know, um, cook it, you know, cook the food that I'm going to give to them in human shit? So he said, man, okay, well, you don't have to do it in human shit. Just do it in in, uh, in cow shit, in cow dung. Okay, so that was actually a curse. So we think that we grow up. So check this out. So now in 2019, we're actually growing our food in cow dung. And we actually buy charcoal with shit in it. They say it's human shit in, in charcoal. They say it's cow shit in charcoal. Either way, it's shit. So, how many of you do that? So, right here, that's abomination before God to burn those, to burn food or cook or anything with coals. You understand? Those charcoals are actually, we don't know what they are. So, how many of you actually just burn with wood, with the, with the cedar wood or with the pine wood? You understand? So, so that's, that's a big thing right there about, you know, it's a lot of things that we don't know. You know, and that, that the enemy has, you know, put into our lives where, you know, we thinking we're doing right. All right. We thinking we're doing right. So it actually says that. So it actually says. Um, the sons of Nabu, uh, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu put coals, coals of fire. They put coals of fire in their incense burners. And sprinkled incense over them. Alright. So they actually put the coals in there. To make it burn hotter. You know that's what people do. That, that's why you go buy. Because that's why you initially start buying the. Um, uh, the charcoal. Because you didn't want to take the time to find wood to burn. You know. Or they probably made a law where you couldn't even. Cut no wood. Because I know in some states you can't cut no. Nothing you can't you know. So. Or even, you know, but you you don't have to cut any wood. It's so much it's so much byproduct of, of wood and tree laying around in the forest, you never gotta cut a tree to even burn a fire anyway, using sticks and stems and stuff like that. So you don't have to try to cut a you can find pieces of trees everywhere. Alright. So uh, they put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkle incense over them. In this way, they disobey, okay? And disobey. So fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up, okay? Because fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up, all right? Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord meant when he said, I will display my holiness, okay? Listen, I will display my holiness through those who come near me. I will display my glory before all my people, okay? Before all my people. So, I mean, I think you need the you need Hawada 
tell you whether you should be sacrificing an animal or not. Okay, and I think that's the most important part. And what type of fire to burn it with, you know, because he tells you what type of fire and and what to put in it, what what uh, what seasons to put on it. He tell you what oil to use to burn with it. Bang. So, do do you know all those things if you're sacrificing a lamb to the fire? And let's go to um, let's go to Levi 17, which is also very important because it talks about the prohibition of eating blood. Okay. Let's go to Levi 17. The prohibition of eating blood, and that's another question. Are you bloodletting the animal? But that's not even a question because we don't even make it to that part because we haven't found yet where it says that I want you to do this. We haven't found yet where it says, hey man, in order to get out of captivity, this is what you have to do in the latter days. We want to talk about an exodus or a story of one that we are deciphering, putting together, that was re-delivered and repackaged by the hijack, put in English, all these things, you know what I mean? We don't know what's what. Let's stop playing, man. We know the Old Old Testament's been all kind of sliced and diced. We know the New Testament's been sliced and diced. We know we're probably not dealing with the original names. Everything's all over the place. Chronology's all over the place. You have to admit that. That shouldn't put you in confusion or scare you. It means you got to start really digging on it. And that's what the whole investigation is about, man. When we talk about priesthoods, man, you're talking about priest kings, Prester Johns, not one person. We're not looking for one person. We're talking about the entire priesthood. And that's an incredible investigation because it has everything to do with sacrifices and everything to do with David. Everything to do with the priest king and the descendants of David and the oath and the covenant. Do the descendants of David today that already have a covenant through David with Hawa have to start killing innocent lambs and sheep and bulls and whatever to appease our creator? Or has he had enough bloodshed? Is this a whole nother type of exodus? Is this a whole other type of frequency? Is it relevant today? You wouldn't know it until your creator frees you and gives you the law, re-establishes the law in your heart, in your inward part, so you know what you're doing. So you know where your tabernacle is. We're about to get into the tabernacle. Hakan. Okay, because for he said that Keep in, the water um, flowing. in Psalms 50, he said that all the animals are mine. So I don't need, I really, he, that's, he really said, I don't need you to do that because all the animals are mine. So let's go over to Leviticus, Leviticus, uh, Leviticus chapter 17, man. Um, yeah, let's check that out. All right, this is the prohibitions against eating blood, all right? Leviticus 17, let me just sip some water. The prohibitions are eating blood. Then Hawa said to Moshe, Give the following instructions to Aaron and his sons and all the people of Israel. All right. This is to all the people of Israel. Okay. This is what Hawa has commanded. All right. Now listen very carefully. This is Leviticus 17. All right. And I think this put the nail in the ground. This put the staff into the ground, man, right here. All right? This, this Leviticus 17 puts the staff in the ground of, I think, should you even be, um, Sacrificing lambs, our lambs, okay? Hawa's lambs, all right? So, he said, Then Hawa said to Moshe, Give the following instructions to Aaron and his sons and all the people of Israel. This is what Hawa has commanded. If a native Israelite, if a native Israelite sacrifices a bull, all right, or a lamb, or a goat, all right? So this is in that question. Anywhere inside, or outside the camp. So he says, if if a native Israelite, so is this person an Israelite? Is this person an Israelite? All right. So if a native Israelite sacrifices a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside, so where the place do you have? If you can't sacrifice it inside, you can't sacrifice it outside. What other place is there? All right. 
that means nowhere, okay? If a native Israelite sacrifice a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside the camp instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle, all right? Where is the entrance of the tabernacle, all right? Where's the entrance of the tabernacle? Alright, let me let me get over there to Leviticus 17. So you say, and Hawal spoke unto Moshe, saying, speaking to Aaron and to his sons. Alright, these these were priests, right? Priests, right? And unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing in which Hawal hath commanded, saying, What man soever be of the house of Israel? that killeth an ox or a lamb or goat in the camp or that killeth it out of the camp. Alright? Alright, so. So, now, now we got that. So, we talking about in or outside of the camp or if, it, if anybody who is a Israelite. Okay? Alright? So, instead... Of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle. Where is the entrance of the tabernacle? The entrance of the tabernacle is where the priests. That's where the priests are. That's where the priests are. Okay? That's Hawal's house. Okay? So it said, if any native Israelite sacrifice a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside the camp, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle, to present it as an offering to Hawal, right? That person will be guilty as a murderer, okay? That person will be guilty as a murderer, all right? Such a person has shed blood and will be cut off from the community. Such a person will be, such a person has shed blood, okay, and will be cut off from the community. The purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals. The purpose of this is to stop Israelites from sacrificing animals, all right? Stop sacrificing animals. In the open fields, it will ensure that they bring their sacrifices to the priests. Bring their sacrifices to the priests at the entrance of the tabernacle. That's God's house. That's a wall's house. Okay? At the entrance of the tabernacle, so he can present them to a wall as peace offerings. Then the priest will be able to splatter the blood against the Lord's altar at the entrance of the tabernacle and will burn the fat as a pleasing aroma to Hawal. The people must no longer be unfaithful to Hawal by offering sacrifices to the goat idols. Okay? That's 17. That's Leviticus 17 and 7. Okay, the people must no longer be unfaithful to Hawal by offering sacrifices to goat idols. Okay, this is a permanent law for them to be observed from generation to generation. So basically, if you don't take the bull to the tabernacle, the house of God, where the priests are, to the entrance of the tabernacle, then... You will be cut off the community for one, all right? You're creating an ultimate sin but for two. And for three, you're sacrificing to goat idols. So basically, anyone that's trying to sacrifice and say it's in the name of Hawaii is actually sacrificing to goat idols because they haven't taken, taken that animal to the tabernacle where the priests are because they're the only ones ordained to do it, right? And let's not even get into Leviticus, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to see how they were, how they were required, how they were ordained, okay? How they were ordained priests, okay? They were ordained priests by the, the sacrificial killing of a ram and of a... Uh, um, and a bull, 
Okay, Moses um, sacrificed a ram, which is a which is an adult lamb. Okay, and and a bull and a and a bull, which is an adult. Okay, they didn't sacrifice no baby. Okay, they sacrificed adults, and that was for her wall. Okay, that was for the blood of her wall, and they had instructions to do that. Okay, that was for them. Being, that was for Aaron and his seeds to be ordained, okay, consecrated as priests, okay, so for one, for one, um, the sacrifice has to be done by ordained priests, okay, who was used by uh, a messenger from Hawaii to sacrifice, and this was uh, Moses who was a high priest, okay, who had to sacrifice a ram and a, I mean a ram and a bull, okay, for their consecration into, so you can't call yourself a real priest unless you actually had uh, a high priest sacrifice a bull and a ram to Hawa on account of you being blessed in to be a priest body bag daniel we're talking about the priesthood you don't just wake up and say you know what i got some great information look people are listening to me for some reason i'm ahead of everybody look at my nubs i'm a priest let's go find some lambs let's go get them lambs save the lamb because sometimes the lambs need saving. Your consecration, your anointing. Okay, so all the way around, man. I, ho I hope this. I hope this. Um, you know, answer answers all your questions. Okay. Um, so Leviticus seventeen and eight. Seventeen and eight says, "Give them this command as well. If any native Israelite or foreigner living among you offer a burnt." Or offering a burnt offering or sacrifice, but not, but but does not bring it into the entrance of the tabernacle to offer it to the Lord. That person will be cut off from the community. Okay, and if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you eats or drinks blood of any form, it will turn against that person. I will turn against that person and cut him off from the community of your people. For the life of the, for the life of the body, the life of the body is in the blood. For the life of the body is in the blood. Okay, for the life of the body is in the blood. That's seventeen and eleven. Okay, I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with Hawal. Okay, it is the blood giving in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. That is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, neither you nor the foreigners living among you. All right. So if any native Israelite, a foreigner living among you, goes hunting and kills an animal or bird, okay, that is approved for eating, you must drain the blood and cover, and cover it with the earth. All right. So, so man, I, I hope, you know, There'll be a lot of naysayers that say, you know, that try to go around, you know, that uh, situation or go around those, those verses. But Leviticus 10, Leviticus chapter 17, um, you know, so watch how you burning your fires. You might be burning your fire with shit in it. You might be burning fire and cooking your food with shit. So be careful of that and be careful of sacrifices. Okay. Those are Hawa's animals. We are Hawa's children. Um, you don't have to sacrifice the child of, of, of Hawa. Okay? And also, it's technicalities for sacrificing animals. It's penalties. It's repercussions. All right? Check your sin log, man. <laughs> we stick it to the law, statutes, and commandments. Mm. You know, I'm just the messenger. I'm just reading from the Torah. Uh, you can form your own opinion. Wow. All right, so Shalom, I hope that answered y'all questions. And uh, 
uh, Eres Israel, uh, Yasharala, Yashur, all right, Yehuda, all right, Shalawan, Shabbat Shalawan family. Man, I mean, we're just talking about the land, man. You know, should we sacrifice our lambs? <laughs> what do the scriptures say? Hey, man, you know, uh, at the end of the day, maybe it's just something to, maybe it's just good that we're digging. You know what I mean? Hey, if, if the creator's happy that you're killing animals, you know what I mean, without his, uh, uh, you know, uh, discretion, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Without, without, without the approval, without the anointing of a priesthood, when you declare yourself king or when you declare yourself priest, ain't that the same thing that was happening? Are we reliving the past? Well, hey man, when it comes to going to Utah, everyone should go enjoy the flow. When it comes to going to Arizona, enjoy the Grand Canyon. I mean, you can go anywhere, hijack or not, man. It's a free, it's a free world, right? Nah, man, it's tribal, and, uh, you know, that flow is always going to overwhelm and overtake <clears throat> any other BS, any other bullshit, you know, the tribal reality, and it doesn't mean, oh, you know, look at people that agree with me, it means the tribes of Hawa, are the tribes of Hawa slaughtering lambs and goats or sheeps or or lambs without a blemish in 2019 to please their creator? What about our sacrifice of righteousness? What about our sacrifice of joy? What about our sacrifice of thankfulness? Because when we're righteous, we're keeping the laws, man. It's no more simple than we can get. We got pure examples of someone who is perpetuating falsehood completely. And I'm not holding back from it. It ain't no, you know, <laughs> just just stall me with all the threats, bro. Because I got way too much power. I got way too much energy. I got way too much vibration to listen to that. Because I know who I rock with. I understand and overstand where we are. This is home turf. For me, this is home turf, man. I spiral all the way up and down this baby. See, I'm from here. You can feel it. It's a different vibration. It's the one that, for some reason, you were threatened of, man. But see, the tribe ain't threatened of the vibration because the tribe is the vibration. Because when we talk to Hakan Hiramar, I am Hakan Hiramar. When we talk Khan Drop, he is Khan Drop. This is one drop right here. There ain't, there ain't no separation. So, you know, we all something lit up in us all, man. And say, is our people really serious enough to go to such a pristine, sacred place and start slaughtering innocent lambs? Will that appease our creator? Without our righteousness, putting a power before our power, keeping our Shabbat, not worshiping no idols, man, honoring our frame, our shaper, not bearing false witness, ain't it clear? Aren't we smart? You don't try to. Harm your brother or sister or take down your brother and sister because you mad. And start jumping on what the prosecutor's saying and start jumping on what the enemy's saying and just start applauding the enemy for your brother, for the hurt, for that which I divulge in you as a brother because we used to talk, man. So this ain't about me and you. You know what I mean? There's a reason why. You know, that trust is betrayed and it has everything to do with the first, you know, flow of sending people to Utah without a plan. Oh, but you got a plan now. 
You've appointed leaders. Yeah, yeah, they die. Hey, look, man. All praise our creator. I rock with all those that love me a lot. I rock with all those that, you know, have some issue here and there, whatever the case is, or have some hatred in the heart. That's cool, man, because at the end of the day, it's just energy, frequency, and vibration. And all of it's necessary on, on whatever side of this and whatever, all, you know, everything got sides to it. Everything got perspectives, right? So you got a perspective, we got a perspective. But be careful with the people, man. Be careful doubting the reality of the scriptures. The reality says we need to offer our righteousness to our creator. The reality is we need to offer our joy. Why are we joyful? Because it's our time to be redeemed. We're joyful because the creator exists. We're joyful because we have the breath of security, man. Why are we thankful? <laughs> because we have an opportunity again to try up. Are our brothers seriously talking about slaughtering lambs, man? I mean, maybe you just got to see it for yourself, you know? Maybe you just got to. See it to believe it, man. Go subscribe to Hot Kind Hire Mark. Click the link below. And you know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's going crazy. You know, but it's not about you, man. Look at this schmug. Look at this angry schmug, man. How, how you be that angry in, in you, though, man? What? You don't want no one to speak against something that we see and are showing and proving is absolutely wrong? To take, it, to take it upon yourself to kill one of Hawa's animals or multiple animals. Can you imagine if everyone started doing just like you doing? But that's what you want? That's what they're there for, just to be slaughtered now? Is that going to appease our creator? Bloodshed? Dragon boys, a hijack. Look, man, you do... You do you... Okay. We're just talking about the land, man. All right, everybody, I hope you're doing well. We're out here, uh, we're in, still in Virgin. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Passover at Mark's Land. I've talked to a few of the people that have uh, lambs. Uh, I've talked to a few of the people that are putting in for lambs. And these things uh, need to be done in a private place. Um, so, Ain't you supposed to take it to the tabernacle? Didn't we just get that out the script? What we're going to do is after talking to all the wise men, it seems it would be best to do it at Mark's place. Uh, oh, and we're going to go out there uh, and work the land. We had a situation that occurred uh, uh, yesterday. Um, we were out there in the BLM area. We tried to uh, acquire a spot. Um, the spots are marked. Um, we were at an unmarked spot, and somebody came and started uh, giving us a problem. The guy came over and started talking to my wife. I acknowledged uh, as I went over to talk to him. And then uh, I said hi. He said hi. And he continued to talk to my wife. Uh, at this point, I, uh, I talked directly to my wife. I said, what's going on? He started mumbling something. And then uh, I went in his ass. Uh, you went in his ass. Now, whatever, when I say chaos, this is what I'm saying. It's always some situations, you know, some whatever. Now, whatever sh stain and shit stain and, and trail you leave behind, guess what happens to the next man who looks like you, who has a beard, who worships the creator? They say, oh, you're another one of them. You're another one of them. Just walking around starting shit because why are you on BLM land, BLM land, talking about sacrificing lambs, man? On BLM land? That's why you need your own land. Look, man, you started this, right? You started this Utah shit, man. You started this whole, you know, 
go to Utah, you know, free, free your mind, you know what I'm saying, go to Utah, and we get it, man, because the more research we did, the more we realized how, how pinpoint accurate your research was, man, and that's why we loved you, man, hey, Lex, I'm talking to you, man, we're having a heart-to-heart, -heart. look at me, man, come on, man, don't be shy, look at me, man, I'm talking to you, man, I loved you, man. I love you, man. You know, deep down inside, man. I mean, I, you know, as a, from from researcher to researcher, man. At at one point, man, I I felt there was a brother inside, man. Until I saw what you did to your brothers, and I rock with them and I ride with them, man. Until I saw what you do to even me when I disagree or something with you, then it becomes this whole I'm bringing down the king. Da 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 da. It's crazy, man. It's all over the place. But that's not why I ain't fucking with you. That, that That's not why this is all about. I ain't fucking with you, man. Because you're wicked. It's not about not liking you, but there's a wicked streak. There's a wickedness. And I've seen it grow, and I've seen it grow. And then it becomes this spontaneous, you know, dual, multiple personality bullshit. But it don't phase a real one because we're all in the frequency, bro. So no one gets shaken up because you get angry, bro. Control your emotions. You're showing that you have weakness when you can't control yourself, man. But why are you on BLM land trying to sacrifice a lamb, man? Now you got to go back to marsh land. I got history with Mark, man. What it do? We done talked on the phone before. You know what I mean? Good bro. You know? Nothing. It's all good. I'm just talking directly to Lex, man. I loved you, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? We appreciate so much that you brought out in the information, man. But when it came to the vibration, bro. Oh, man. Static, static, hijack city, man. And then it got worse and worse and worse. And then it became combative. And then it became... You know, hatred. And then you took a private situation that I told you and you made it all this, which you thought might, you know, shake up the foundation. But you don't understand, man. I tell the truth, man. You don't understand, man, that I let my people in on what was happening to me. You see what I'm saying? And I got no shame in going through a situation, especially one that I've been fighting for innocence. So you can't judge that because you're not a witness to that. And I only bring it up because I'm just talking about breaking commandments, man. That's when I separated, when I saw that you were habitually going to keep breaking commandments, that you're habitually going to speak on situations that you're not privy to just to try to ruin or hurt or stain someone that was a brother, man. So, you know, and it got to be no more personal than that. But when it comes to the tribe, when it comes to the people, when it comes to the land, see, I'm looking out because people going to follow in your shoes and your footsteps, man. You got to be responsible for this. So the next time that BLM member comes into contact with one of our tribe or whatever the case is, he might have issues for no reason with them because of the shit you're starting. That's what I mean by... This whole field of chaos, <clears throat> this whole fucking, fucking giant gas stain, gas funk of chaos that you're leaving in your path, man. Because you are, um, we, we never had issues with the BLM, man. We go wherever. We keep it pushing. We keep the water flowing. We have a frequency. We connect with everybody. We ain't never had a bad experience. You know what I'm saying? Flowing as a tribe through Utah, man. Whenever we connected, like, you know what I'm saying, in the flow, wherever we go, camping out, our land, Zion, wherever we doing. But it's issue after issue, and it's your own frequency, and you ain't getting it. You're attracting negative vibrations and frequency, and a creator just got to work. But this ain't no hatred, bro. But when it comes to a sickness, and when it comes to a darkness and a wickedness, all I can do is correct you. And keep it flowing. Anything else other than that, please know that 
we powered up, brother. We powered up, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, all praise the Creator. We do it for the tribe. And hopefully we can save the lamb. Because sometimes the lambs need saving. You know, stop talking to my family, you know, uh, and all this other stuff. You know, um, in, 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 in reality, we're camped right here. A couple hundred feet over, there was another uh, set of people camped. They were what? Um, and a couple hundred feet over another. All of us were camped at an area that did not have camp markings so of course out of all the people that this guy is going to go talk to and say you know anything to it's going to be my wife oh you know? you know it's it's look man stop it man it's your own flow brother we've done this many of times bro always beautiful always love man it's what you put now you don't see clearly um so that almost turned into a situation, and of course, this guy is like, I'm going to go tell the BLM, and we're like, you do whatever the fuck you want, man. I'll see you soon. Um, so we had to deal with that yesterday, and uh, after discussing this with a few of the, uh, the people that are, that, are, that, are, that are helping out, you know, it's best that we do this in a private area so that we, that we don't have any situations by these people. Um, when we were out there... Uh, one of the brothers is here. He had uh, two shovels, a rake, uh, and a pickaxe. We spent about an hour and a half flattening out a uh, little little mesa, and uh, we <laughs> we weren't too far from pitching uh, our tents, man, um, before this happened. So we saw what it took to clear that area out within uh, just two hours, and so we're just going to hit Mark's land and, uh, and, and start doing some places. Uh, Otis talked to... Uh, the the woman at the land office and she said we don't have to be on Mark's land we just need to be in the area of Mark bro I mean who are you talking to this is some shit you talk about on the phone you know what I'm saying you, you, you're giving all these names out you know what I'm saying what if there's what if there's a group of black ops that have a black desk and they're watching the negroes as they're making their exodus strategies and moves, you know, and maybe not everyone you're talking to needs to be put on blast for the entire universe to see. You're acting like you're having a private conversation. It's boring the shit out of me because you're just talking about, and then Otis and her, we don't fucking, look, man, there's people that's just not clicking on this video. What are you saying? Hold up, man, what is this damn? You that say, oh, he hasn't got following the law. Now, you can already hear the frequency, how excited he is to slay this lamb. This is the lamb they chose, right? Without a blemish. And they keep going to the scripture. Back to Exodus. Back to Moshe. You're not Moses. What are you doing? What miracles are coming out of you, man? Moses was king of Cush for 40 years in the book of Jasher. King of Cush for 40 years, bro. What have you done to be Moshe? What conversation with the creator did you have that has convinced these people, my people, that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for you. I ain't bashing you because you in Utah. I love y'all. I'm talking directly to this man, and I've been there before with this man, and we've been there with Jay Stu, Mario Shalise, Cam. We've been there with Sister V. We've been there with folks listening to him out there and being left stranded and hanging and that's why we came together with our tribal fund that's why we came together as a tribe and that's why we said never again now you do you y'all do you enjoy many of trips but when you start taking the blood of Hawaii's animals look at his eyes man he's like what scripture is this how is this truly is this going to please my creator that you're going to slice my heart out man slice my throat Look how peaceful and beautiful this lamb is, man. This is Hawaii's lamb. And look at this corny motherfucker. This corny motherfucker that thinks his corny ass is a priest. That thinks his corny ass <laughs> is worthy of taking the life. This lamb, man, this lamb right here is better than you, bro. I'm just going to go on and say, this lamb 
I'm just gonna call him Alfred, man. Alfred, man, is better than you, bro. Because he has a pure heart, man. I can see it in his eyes. Alfred's better than you, man. I don't care what you think you know. You don't you don't got you don't got shit on Alfred. Alfred got the Alfred got the drop on you, bro. You ain't got shit on Alfred, man. We trying to save you, Alfred. We see you, man. We got your picture. We looking for you, man. We want you out that cage. We trying to free the prisoners. They trying to put you in captivity. They trying to put the lamb in captivity. We're trying to free the lamb. We're trying to save the lamb. Because sometimes the lambs need saving. This corny motherfucker think he could take your life, Alfred. This silly rabbit. <laughs> hey, man. You heard the script. You heard the hot con. Hawaii's not pleased by blood no more. Enough blood has been spilled. Set this beautiful male species without a blemish aside. Look how corny this motherfucker is, man. Hey, earmuffs, man. You know what I'm talking about, man. I ain't cursing you, but I am going to cuss. You know what I mean? But I'll never curse you. I, I'm not even cursing Lex Will. That's how much I don't curse, but I will cuss. I am going to cuss. This corny motherfucker is making a mockery out of the creator. If this is the lamb you're sacrificing to the creator, why do you sound like this? Has set this beautiful male species without a blemish aside from... The moment he was supposed to, we have been following the law. So, those of you that say, oh, he hasn't got the sheep yet, don't worry about that. We got the main dealio. Oh. Those of you who say he ain't got the sheep yet, look, we got the main dealio. This is what you're following, man. This is the vibration you're following to take the life of this pure water sheep that belongs to Hawa only. Hawa gave no such commandment to you. You have not been freed from your chains. Our people are still in captivity. They have not walked out of Egypt together, side by side, collecting golden vessels and silver vessels and emptying the pockets of the hijack on the way out. The wonders and the signs have yet begun, but you are already slaughtering. And spilling the blood. And mocking. Hawa. Already. Glory to the Most High. <laughs> and we're going to. Glory to the Most High. You hear what they're saying, man? We're going to kill this. We're going to kill Alfred. Glory to the Most High. Why don't you kill your hijack? Why don't you sacrifice. In righteousness. Why can't your righteousness be enough to your creator? Why can't listening and obedience be enough to our creator? Why can't your joy for redemption be enough? Do you think the Most High is going to plague his people? Rain down plagues on his people? Oh, you gotta do, you gotta kill Alfred so you'll be plague free while smoking cigarettes, fool? Hijack 101 to be going out there and uh we're, we're gonna work this stuff and, and get this set up and uh i mean if the sheep he, he, this lamb it's like he knows he's being recorded so what does he do he starts eating to show you that he's healthy <laughs> these motherfuckers are silly man look man the man's amazing the man's amazing he sounds like a devil and that's why i said you're wicked Cause who sounds like this and mocks this is like the christians that put Christmas presents under the Christmas tree. You're going to say the, the tree stands for Christ, but then put, decorate the damn tree with glitter and shit and make a mockery out of it. If you did take this serious, I can't tell. We can't tell. Your heart should be heavy for the life that's about to be spilled out into the ground, man. You shouldn't sound like you're just about to step on a roach or light a spider on fire. You're a sick man, bro. 
and it's the real thing. I mean, it don't matter what you say. I don't give a shit what you say about me. Just, man, save the sheep, man. Because sometimes the sheep need saving, man. And that's as real as it gets, man. Um, you know, we're making our dismount. A hop to the real ones. Love to win a point. Can pony, man. Love to all the family contributing to the drop, man. Continue to support. We appreciate you. Support to eat the squad. Yeah, you know I mean, this is dragons on the wall. The dragon is the fire, the water, the energy, man. The earth. We're talking the air, the ether, man. Come over here, get in the ether, enjoy the flow. Enjoy what we bring it, man. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get out of here like this, man. Uh, Hosea 3. Then Hawa said to me, go and love your wife again. We're just talking about being the harlot. This is why we're in bondage, man. This is why we're in bondage. It ain't our lack of bloodshed. Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord, Hawa, still loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. That's why we are in chains, not because of our lack of slaughter. So I bought her back for 15 pieces of silver. Now Hawa has bought back Israel because we've been playing a harlot. We've been a hoe. Israel ain't going to be no hoe no more. It's, but Hawa bought us back. He bought the hoe back, right? He bought the harlot for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution. You my hoe. You my harlot. If you're going to be a harlot, you got to live in my house. You better stop being a prostitute, meaning living in your house is keeping the commandments. During this time, you would not have sexual relations with anyone, not, not even with me. In other words, you can't even come to me as my wife, man. You got to be purified. This shows that Israel will go a long time without a king without a prince, and without sacrifices. We're coming out of captivity, and there's been no sacrifices, and no sacrifices can be made without the completion of a time. Sacred pillars, priests, who's Prester John, who's Priest King, and even idols, but afterwards the people will return and devote themselves to Hawa, their power, into David's descendant. In most translations it says, and David, their king, in the last days, they will tremble in awe of Hawa and of his goodness. And that's a very important point. Tremble in awe of Hawa is much different than, and they shall fear, fear Hawa. Because we tremble in awe of Hawa. We're not in a fear spell. That's why it's being translated, you know, differently. Tre trembling in fear. I mean, trembling in awe versus being in this frequency of fear in the English language. just carries a different spell, man. Trembling in awe. And here it says, afterwards, the children of Israel shall return and seek Hawa, their creator, their power, and David, their king. And that's why we search for David. That's why we never give up our search for David. Because in searching for David, we're searching for ourselves. We're searching for our descendants. We're searching for our ancestors, our priests, our kings, our cons. And Israel's gone a long time, man, without sacrifice, man. A long time without a sacrifice. So when you do it, you better do it right. And you better make sure it is ordained by Hawaii. And you better keep the water flowing, man. I said you better keep the water flowing, man. I said we all better tribe up. We all better tribe up, man. And keep the water flowing for a while. You know, we do this for the home team, man. We do this for the real ones. And yeah, you know, heart to heart, man. To, to you, Lex Will, man. Alexander, man. Forget about your hatred for me. Just be obedient. I don't I don't hate you. I ain't got no hatred for you, man, but you know, there's a sickness in how you operate. And it's up to us 
they had a responsibility to lay it on out there, man, when the order needs to be laid out. And all you can do is, you know, accept it or keep going your path. And everyone can discern that when it comes to the lamb and the animals, I fight for them. I fight for the earth. I fight for the water. And I fight for the flow. Keep the water flowing. Keep the fire burning. All praise. Our eternal head of days. Wow.